how many of us have done the process before? Okay, yeah, okay, good. And some of us are new, it'll be the first time. First time through, okay, yeah, excellent. Good. Um, well, so we have you know, 90 minutes together and uh, how, how we'll run it is, you know, I'll do, um, you know, of course, you know, we'll, we'll raise our bodhicitta, we'll take some time to land, to ground, and then I'll spend a little bit of time going over um, kind of an overview of feeding your demons and the history of it, the roots of it. And then um, we'll go over kind of some tips for, for those of us who are new on um, how to do it. And, and then the main part of our night tonight will be the practice itself, which um, is really a beautiful practice and wild in a way and um, incredibly effective in um, starting to become more familiar with those parts of ourselves, those demons that are maybe not, not integrated or not as known um, and really getting, having this opportunity to somatically feel them and kind of bring them into consciousness so that we can know them more, but also so that we can begin to see the inherent energy that's a, that is a potential liberated energy that's in the demon. So Lama Sultram always says, the stronger the demon, the stronger the ally. So um, I'll go over a little bit of an overview of that. And like I said, we'll do the practice itself. And then we'll have some time to share um, what the experience was like, you know, both maybe with a partner and then also as a group. And, um, you know, any questions that come up, we can do that at, at the end of um, our journey together. And then, of course, as always, we'll dedicate the merit and send out the blessings of our time together. So that will be kind of a lay of the land, lay of the land. Yeah. Okay. Today is Wednesday. The first, I have a teacher that always orients, orients us when we begin the, the, the course. So today is Wednesday. 7 p.m. Uh, yeah, we, we have some of us here in the city, San Francisco, the Ohlone land of the Ramatush people. And we also have friends online. So maybe we could say hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I... Uh, I dislocated my kneecap on December 24th. So I still can't, you know, put it in the proper meditation thing. So this is why it's like this. All right, well, um, let's take a moment to land. I can guide us a little bit and then we'll raise our, our bodhicitta. Yeah. Yeah, whatever is comfortable. You know, we each have our own practice. Um, so if the eyes are open or closed, or as we do in shamatha, you know, slightly opened, I'm going to go ahead and close my eyes. And I know we know, but we're now just taking the moment to arrive. And we are beings that are perpetually in motion for much of the day. And if our bodies are not in motion, our minds certainly are. So we're giving ourselves as a group the chance to land and come into a kind of presence within our own body, of course, but also with each other in this room. And even if we can imagine in an even deeper sense with those that are online with us, just knowing that we are all connected in that truth of interdependence. That's good. And taking a few moments just to be with your breathing. And with the simplicity and the kindness of allowing the breathing just to be as it is.
And there is, as we know, a kindness in this. And allowing. And we'll raise our bodhicitta in a few moments, but in this spacing, if your awareness can travel, just, you know, even lightly through your body, your feet, your legs, your hips, your pelvis, tummy, up into your chest, your breasts, your neck, throat, head, your hands. So beginning to bring all of us or as much of us into presence. Yeah, that's good. And then bringing the hands at the heart or whichever gesture for raising bodhicitta feels good for you, whatever mudra you like. Taking a moment to connect into the Bodhi, the awakened mind, Chitta mind, Bodhi, awake. And if the hands are there at your chest, just feeling intuitively that space that's there beneath, you know, behind your breastbone. That's the heart chakra. The Tibetans talk about the seat of awakening being there. And seeing if you can sense into how your heart mind is right now. So bringing our awareness to it, we raise our bodhicitta, our intention that our time together, that it be of benefit, not only for our own healing, our own awakening, but that any insight, any sweetness, any wisdom, compassion that we may generate to get today together, that it may also benefit all beings everywhere. As it's said, near and far, known and unknown, without one exception. Thank you. Thank you for your bodhicitta. Thank you. <clears throat> So um, I'm not sure how many of us um, know each other, but um, if, I'd like us to kind of just turn to the person next to you. And if you could share, you know, if you'd like, if you could share, you know, maybe one thing or two things that you've been carrying with you. Um, you know, it could be a worry, it could be a fear, it could be, um, you know, so many things. But whatever it is that you're bringing uh, into the room with you tonight. And it also could be a joy. You could be coming here being like, this is the one night I don't have a demon. I'm just blissed out. And you can share that too. Yeah. So we'll just take a few moments for that. Yeah. I did wonder if you describe a demon a little bit. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Um, uh, yes, I, I will, definitely. I will, for sure. Um, but in terms of this one uh, exercise, we can think of it just something maybe that's weighing heavy on you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. And for those of you online, just yeah. imagine to your, your, your inner witness. Yeah. <laughs> 
There is a, a lot of happy energy in the room talking about our demon. <laughs> you all are my kind of people. <laughs> Oh my God. I gotta tell you, I'll tell you a story about me and my demons a little later. So embarrassing. Um, okay. So, yeah. So it sounds like uh, some of us may know, you know, what we're, what we're coming in with, but let me just do a little, just a little overview on um, what this whole feeding your demons thing is. And uh, for those of us for whom it's new, and then for those of us who have done this many a times, then maybe you hear something, something new. Um, so uh, feeding your demons is a five step process that was developed by, by my teacher. Her name is Lama Sultra Malione. And uh, it's a five step method in which we, um, begin to engage with, with a demon or uh, a part of our life that kind of is blocking us in energy pattern, fear, um, impatience, insecurity, um, anger. There can be demons of, you know, health, health concerns that we have, financial concerns that we carry, um, illnesses, you know, demon of illness. And we, in this process, we, we begin to feel where those are in our body and we externalize it into a demon. And in the five-step process, um, which, you know, 
I'll guide you through. We begin to dialogue with that demon or that part of ourself, that part of ourself that's blocked. And in that dialogue and in a series of questions, we come to know that part of ourselves and what it is that it really needs. And we, we come, we begin to actually engage with it and feed it what it needs, give it what it needs. And in that process, that part of us is transformed. That, that's part of what, what the five steps leads you through into the transformation of the demon into the ally. Machik says, and this is her quote, that demons are anything that block our experience of freedom. So anything in our subtle body, anything in our, in our psyche, our mind, that are keeping us from, you know, that experience of freedom is in the old way they said it. That experience of being at ease, that experience of being like, okay, uh, that experience of having or allowing more peace into our life so that we can bring more peace into someone else's life. Some of our demons, we suffer alone. Only we know that we're carrying them, you know? And they're kind of in, at least that's how some of mine are. They're kind of like you know, in me and, and like they're all over here, let's say, and I'm still living my life and doing my thing, but it's still here, you know? And they can be painful, you know? Um, certain times in our life, certain demons can come up more strongly. Certain situations can bring up certain demons. Oh, there's that one. There's my attachment demon or there's my early wounding demon that comes up a lot in my relationship with my husband. You know, some of those um, earlier wounds get triggered, those demons. So a little bit um, about where this came from and I'll share a story because I love this story. Traditionally, um, some of us know this, so I don't want to go into it, but the feeding your demons process is comes from a process in Tibetan Buddhism called the Chut process, C-H-O-D, the D is silent. And that to, Chut means to cut through. And um, this, the, this practice that you do in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition is really wild. I mean, it's amazing. You, you use a drum, you sing, you use a bell. And in the process, it's a visualization in which you're offering, and this sounds a little crazy maybe for the Western mind, but you're offering parts of yourself that have been dissolved into nectar into offering it to the gods and the demons, to the powers that be for protection. So it has a very shamanic roots. There was, before Buddhism came in, into Tibet, there was a really strong, vibrant bone tradition, which like a lot of our earliest, 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 you know, ancestors was very shamanic in nature. So the woman that came up with this is this woman named Machik Ladron, who was uh, a yogini, a woman who lived in the 10th, 11th century. She was a mother and she was the first female teacher in Tibet that had the lineage coming right from her. And she was, I think, you know, there are some of the, some of these people come you know, in generations. And she was really, I think, a spiritual genius. She figured something out. And what I want to share is the story um, that happened when she was a young woman, you know, 1920. And she was having, she was meditating. This is in the, in the Himalayas. So you can imagine high in, in, in Tibet, uh, the land of snow. And she was in a gompa, in like a, a yurt type thing with her teacher meditating. And she has this like crazy experience, you know, where she understands something so profound. I can't even really, I can't imagine, but it's said in the story that she flies through the walls of the gompa of the temple and lands herself in a tree. And this tree isn't just any tree. This tree is sitting by the side of a lake. And it's not just any lake. This lake is said to be haunted by Nagas, which were which are water spirits, serpentine water spirits. And not only by Nagas, but by the king of the Nagas. 
this lake was so scary to the villagers in this time that when the Tibetans would walk by it, they wouldn't even look at the lake. And here's this woman who's about 20, sitting in the branches of the tree in her meditation posture, facing the lake. This pisses the Nagas off greatly. The king of the Nagas comes up in her meditation and faces her and says, I mean, I'm ad-libbing, but basically, <laughs> what are you doing, you know? Like, what, <laughs> lady, you know, this is my tree. What are you doing? And, you know, and he threatens her. I'm going to devour you. I'm going to destroy you. Whatever all those things, you may hear allusions to what happened to the Buddha when he was under his tree in his moment of enlightenment, the Maras that come to him in those moments. Eventually, of course, as we know, the Buddha turns to the Maras and says, Mara, I know you. The Maras don't disappear, of course, in that moment, but he does change his relationship to them. So in this, I'm taking us back now, a thousand years, 1500 years later into the Himalayas with Machi. And she says, after they, you know, speak, um, are confronting her and scaring her. She looks them in the eyes and says, take me, take me. She was ready in that moment to offer her body to these demons, to these Nagas. In that moment, the king of the Nagas was so just amazed by her strength and by her fearlessness that he said, okay, from this moment on, I will protect you. I will be your ally. Anything that comes from you in this lifetime, your lineage, I will watch it. So in that moment, what Machi figured out was the seed that would inform all of her teachings in that lifetime. And that is the seed that informed, that made the Chud practice happen. That sense that we have in, 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 in I don't want to westernize it too much because in Tibet, it, it's real, the demons and all this. But for our, the way to make it that process accessible for the modern person, for me, for you, Lama Sultram figured this out, that taking this seed that Machi did, this powerful, critical moment where she turns and meets the thing that is so scary and looks at it and doesn't just stare it down, but offers, take me here. Yeah. It's a supreme act of generosity offering one's body, really. So that seed is the essence of what's in this practice. But of course, our demons aren't arising from the late. <clears throat> They're arising most likely from the karma of our life, from our traumas, from our wounding, from a mother wound, a father wound, um, cultural wounding, you know, so, so many. So many ways. Um, yeah. Am I remembering correctly? Or am I focused making things up? Hold on. I don't know whether I'm remembering this or I'm making this up, but the detail of she was naked. Yeah. Was she naked? You know, I left that detail out, but I'm going to... <laughs> I'm sorry. Oops. I was thinking, when I tell the story, Jenny, do I tell them <laughs> that she's naked? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for bringing Machi again in her fullness. Yeah, she was naked. Imagine. It's the Tibetan culture, you know? In my mind, I always, you know, that's where this, the narrative ends. But uh, I think about that. I think about her a lot, Machi, you know, for a lot of reasons. Um, but I just think about 
what it was like. And I wrote a poem about this, like what happened when she came down from that tree, you know, uh, they don't tell that part of the story, but I like to imagine that, you know, she had a sister in that lifetime that her sister was there. Maybe she wrapped a blanket around her and just, you know, um, kind of comforted her or was there with her in her humanness when she came down because she figured out something um, pretty, pretty amazing. And, you know, we've had those experiences, maybe not like that in, as intense, but maybe where we see something so different, we're so overcome with our ability to, to love or whatever it is for us, that suddenly we feel so different, you know? Okay. So a few, a few uh, just tips on the process and then we'll get right into it. We'll move a little bit. And um, so this is, you know, a safe, a safe space to do this work. Um, you know, we, it's not a partner work, so you'll be doing it. I'll be guiding you. So please feel free. None of what you experience, none of what you do needs to be shared. And if it is shared, then we know that whatever is shared in this space is held within this space. And it's not discussed outside the circle. Of course, we can talk about our own experience. And I know most of us already know these rules. I'll be guiding the pacing. It's usually, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I worry I'm too speedy because I am speedy, um, but I, it'll be about 30, 35 minutes about. Um, and other little tips. Yeah, the eyes will be closed through the process. Uh, I'll discuss like how we're gonna arrange ourselves, um, the visualization. So this whole thing, journey unfolds in our mind. So we'll be visualizing or imagining. And so, you know, I, it's always said when we guide this is first thought, best thought. First image, just, you know, you just, just go with it. Sometimes it's crazy shit that comes, you know, you just go with it. And that image of the demon or the ally may, um, you know, may change as you go through the process. That's okay, just go with it. Um, stay with the experience of being in the body, you know? Sometimes if the, if the and emotions or the somatic stuff is intense, we can leave. So just slow, slowly guide yourself back. Uh, let's see what else. I think it looks good. Um, yeah, two more things. Uh, yeah, okay. So what to work with? Um, what demon? The best advice here is anything that's draining your energy right now. I mean, maybe not in this moment, but today or this week, something that's up for you. I mean, most of us know some of the stuff that we carry, but if it's something that doesn't have a big charge on it, you know, it may not be as accessible. And also if it's like your biggest demon, you, you, I'm fine to hold that with you as you go through it, but you see how you feel. If it feels like, ah, mm, that may be too big for right now, you don't need to do that one. There's time. You can always run the process again. Um, so if you're choosing to do a demon in a relationship, the demon is the feeling you have in the relationship, not the person, however tempting that is. <laughs> I was thinking about like, I get so impatient with my children and sometimes, and you know, like, oh, like the thing that really gets me is I can't, I, I feel guilty saying, but like, I can't make tea for them. Like the whole process for me is agonizing, the making the tea. It takes so long. They let the tea bag steep, steep either too much or not enough. And then the tea bag comes out. I get so impatient. I can feel like the, the uh, impatience demon just so strong in my body, you know? Uh, so in that case, are my children the demon? <laughs> is the tea the demon? No. It's, it's that feeling that I get. It's like... <laughs> kind of feeling, you know? Okay, and then the last point, um, yeah, this is good timing. The last point is in this process, we ask three questions of the demon and they're beautiful questions. They can be like guiding light questions, whether we're in this process officially or not. And the question is to the demon, what do you want? 
what do you want? So, you know, it, let's say if it's first for alcohol or drugs, you know, I want this, I want that, you know, I want the drug or whatever it is, you know, the first layer. The second question is, what do you really need? Or in my case with my kids, uh, I just, God, I just don't want you to drink tea. Like, go on, stop. <laughs> what is it that you really need? I really need uh, space, whatever, space. Okay, I'm doing mine now. What will you feel like when you get what you really need? So the demon, like I can rest. So what I would feed my demon is this feeling of restfulness. I would fill my body with rest and I would feed that feeling. So what do you want? And it'll be in there. What do you really need? And how will you feel when you get what you really need? Or I really need in that moment, a hug. How will you feel when you get your hug? Loved, you know, so then you feed the love. Okay. Yeah. So let's, um, let's begin thinking even just a little bit about what, what you may want to work with. And I think now, Karen, it's too, too many people now. Yeah, okay. So we weren't sure how we were going to do the chairs. So what's really important for those of us who have never done the process is you actually, you stand up and you change places. So you become, so like I'm Jenny and I see, I won't do it because I'm guiding you, but when... I speak to my demon, my demon's in front of me. And then at one point I get up and I'll, I'll lead you. And I, you guys will stand. Yeah. Yeah. That. So uh, online people, hopefully you can see. Yeah. She just, we just, we're just going to, and if you're online, you have two chairs, you can do that easily for yourselves. So you're just going to stand up and you're going to stand in the place of the demon and body the demon. And you'll do that same thing for the ally. Yeah. Okay. Do we need to push the first row? Yeah. Yeah. We've got to set up a little bit. Okay. And there's some questions up front. So some people want to do it seated, seated on cushions. Um, that's a really nice way to do it. Yeah. And if you have an extra chair, I use it. Feel free. Yeah. yeah it's true. There. Yeah, that's good. I'll go there. This is so exciting. <laughs> I'm so excited. I know. I could handle it. There's a lot of demons in here. And then, but you know what that means? A lot of demons? A lot of a lot of allies. Hey, no. Uh -huh. Okay, everyone. There was one. Have you been waiting for this? Really? Does everyone have a good Oh, it's not done. Really? You don't know. Not first time? Okay. Yes, yeah, so, you know, if this is your first time doing it, you know, like... I know it's just some, there's no perfect, like you just, whatever, you just go, not whatever, but you just go through the process. They know it will guide you. That, that's the whole idea. It's uh, it, any teacher will have it always the same, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Good. I'm really looking forward to doing this with you all and guiding you and also just grateful to be in a room with um, individuals who, are ready and willing and like open to do this work, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we're just wanting to come. Yeah. No rush, no rush. Will you be okay to stand up and face? Yeah, push it back maybe. Okay. All right, so
So let's we can just take a moment um, of closing our eyes and <clears throat> just taking a moment to think about what you may want to work with, what demon and you know, sometimes also if we don't know like the name of it, it can just be like a feeling like a, or something, uh, you know, feel free to use that as well. Sometimes it gets more clear as you go through the process. I'll just take a few more moments here um, for you to land on the demon that you may want to work with today. There could be many that come or... Maybe it's super clear which one. Uh, you can't go wrong, so you just choose one. Maybe it chooses you. And then we'll begin. So we'll begin with nine relaxation breaths. We'll close, cl keeping your eyes closed as much as possible to the, to the end of the process. So we'll begin by taking some deep re relaxation breaths. First, breathe into any physical tension you are holding in your body. Then holding that tension with the breath, release it with the out breath. Now breathe into any emotional tension you are holding. Notice where you are holding emotional tension in your body, then hooking that tension with the breath, release it with the out breath. Now breathe into any mental tension or worries you are holding. Notice where you are holding mental tension in your body. Then hooking that tension with the breath, release it with the out breath. Generate a heartfelt motivation to practice for the benefit of yourself and all beings. Thinking about the demon you have chosen to work with, perhaps remembering a particular time or incident when it came up strongly. Then mentally scan your body and locate where in your body you're holding this demon most strongly. Notice where the demon is held in your body. Now, Imagine it has a shape. What is its shape? If it had a color, what color would it be? What is its texture or consistency? Mm -hmm. 
What is its temperature? Now intensify the awareness of the energy in your body, bringing your full attention to it. Mm -hmm. Now allow the shape with its color, consistency and temperature to move out of your body and become personified in front of you as a being with a face, eyes, limbs, and so on. If an inanimate being appears, invite it to become a being with arms and legs and so on. What size is it? What is its color? What is the surface of its body like? What is its density? If it had a smell, what smell would be associated with the demon? If it made sounds, what kind of sounds would it make? Does it have a gender? What is the look in its eyes? What is the look in its eyes? What is its emotional state? What is its character or personality like? Now notice something about it that you didn't see before. Now ask the demon the following questions, repeating them silently one by one after me. What do you want? What do you really need? How will you feel when you get what you really need? 
Now, uh, immediately switch places, if you can, keeping your eyes closed as much as possible. And you can face your current seat or, or stand facing your seat, whichever one. Yeah, that's good. Good. Take a moment here to settle into the demon's body. Taking a moment to settle into the demon's body. Uh, feel free to adopt the posture or make a gesture the demon might make. If this is helpful. Otherwise, just sit or stand facing your normal self. How does it feel to be in the demon's body? How does your normal self look from the demon's point of view? Now answer the question silently, imagining you're speaking as a demon. What I want is, what I want is. What I really need is. What I really need is. When I get what I really need, I will feel. When I get what I really need, I will feel. And take note of this final answer. And now you return to your original seat. Keeping your eyes closed if possible. Yeah, that's good. And take a moment to settle back in, to back into your own body. Settling back into your own body. See the demon in front of you. Now, remembering what the demon said it would feel if it got what it really needs, evoke that feeling and allow this feeling to spread through your entire body.
Now dissolve your body into a nectar that has the quality of this feeling. Notice the color of this nectar that's from your body. Noticing the color of the nectar. Then feed the demon this nectar and notice how the demon takes it in. An infinite supply of nectar flows to the demon and nurtures it to complete satisfaction. Notice if the demon changes as it takes in the nectar. Just notice if the demon changes as it takes in the nectar. Feed the demon until it is completely satisfied. Remember there is an infinite supply of nectar. If the demon is still feeding, imagine what it would look like if it were completely satisfied. Once the demon is completely satisfied, notice if a being remains. If there is a being, that remains there, ask if it is your ally. If it says yes, then you will work with that. If it says no, or, you know, or you're unsure, or if the demon dissolved during the feeding, then invite an ally to appear. See the ally in front of you. If an inanimate being appeared, imagine what it would look like if it were personified.
What size is it? What's its color? What's the surface of its body like? What's its density? If it had a smell, what smell would be associated with it? If it made sounds, what kind of sounds would it make? Does it have a gender? What is the look in its eyes? What's its emotional state? What's its emotional state? What is its character or personality like? And now notice something about it that you didn't notice before. Now we're gonna ask the ally these questions. And you can repeat the question silently, one by one after me. How will you help me? How will you help me? How will you protect me? What pledge do you make to me? How can I access you? Now we'll switch places one more time. Yeah, that's good. You'll settle into the seat of your ally or standing into your ally. Yeah. And take a moment to settle into the ally's body. Feel free to adopt the posture or gesture of the ally if it's helpful. How does it feel to be in the ally's body? How does it feel to be in the ally's body? How does your normal self look from the ally's point of view? How does your normal self look from the ally's point of view? Now we'll answer the question silently, speaking as the ally. I will help you by I will help you by.
I will protect you by. I will protect you by. I pledge I will. I pledge I will. You can access me by. You can access me by. Uh, you can return to your original seat. And again, you're taking a moment to settle back into your own body and to see the ally in front of you. Settling back into our own body and, and seeing the ally in front of you. If a satisfied demon remained at the end of the, of the feeding, you can invite it back now. Imagine it dissolves into light and let the light integrate into your own body. Now, this is for everyone. Look into the ally's eyes. Look into the ally's eyes and feel this energy pouring into your body. Feel its energy pouring into you. As you feel the energy of the ally coming into your body, it spreads all the way down to the soles of your feet, to your fingertips, and throughout your whole body. Notice how this feels. Now, imagine that the ally dissolves into light. Notice the color of this light. Feel this light dissolving into you. Integrate this luminosity into every cell of your body as though all your cells were being bathed in this light.
take note of the feeling of the integrated energy of the ally in your body. And now you, with the integrated energy of the ally, dissolve. And rest. Rest in the state that is present after the dissolution. Just rest. Now, gradually, come back to your body. Recalling, uh, recalling the feeling of the energy of the ally in your body. As you're coming back, recalling the energy of the ally in your body. And as you, you know, slowly open your eyes, maintain the feeling of the energy of the ally in your body. So we're returning to the room, you know, slowly opening the eyes and even looking around and, and recalling or remembering the feeling of the ally. Yeah. We can take a few moments if you'd like to, if you'd like to um, just sit with the experience or take a few notes, that's helpful to you. We'll have time to share. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it might might be nice again to you know maybe turn turn to the partner that you that we opened with and maybe share one one thought and then we'll come back together as a group maybe one part of your experience in the five steps no. mm -hmm. And those of you online, feel free to journal. And if you're still in your process and don't want to talk, then no problem.
And kind of like that man was like, yeah. there validating whatever those of you online, please feel free to journal. Take notes. Thank you for being here. Maybe another another minute or so. So I don't even like this, you know? Yeah, Yeah. That's a fully embodied experience. Right. You can lay on the couch yourself and do that. You know what I mean? Like, you just beat it out. Yeah. Yeah. Again, so much joy in the room. <laughs>
you know, so this is, you know, we have our time. We've got 15 minutes, which is great. So this is um, the point in the process where we can share if, if we'd like. Um, part of our process, you know, whatever came up for us. It's always, um, can I say, fun to hear what the demons look like, but also it's it's really beautiful to hear the allies' wisdom when it comes through. So, um, and of course, if we had any questions, you know, it's a good time for all that too. So, yeah. Will you pass this guy? Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> Um, What's your name? My name is Ankit. Ankit? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, do you, you calling up your ally, like how, how often are you practicing calling up your allies often? And, yeah. You know, Me? Can you talk about that? Yeah. Perfect. Maybe you're Oh my God. I so much. I need allies. I need so many allies. Sometimes I feel like, what? <laughs> are you okay? Um, yeah. I, I do a lot. I do a lot. Uh, I often, I mean, I, I have my own allies, like um, human allies, but in terms of from this practice, yeah, they often offer, as I, I've been doing this practice for 15 years, and um, I will say that over time, the presence of the ally comes more easily in a way. Somehow, some part of my psyche has grown, that muscle or something has developed or um, I've, I've nurtured it that that part of me that can support myself you know give myself my wisdom um so i do and sometimes my ally you know i'd like to hear what yours are but they're kind of simple sometimes you know like how we remember me like you know face like when you face your put your face towards the sun you know or um put your hand out and i'll hold it it's not super fancy, um, helpful for me. Yeah, and that is actually, it's a good question. The ally, working with the ally and energy is a real part of the integration process. So the, the energy that was in the demon that was maybe more like this, sticky, sometimes we say trauma is sticky or, you know, it, it, it's that very same energy that's become the ally. And part of the integration process, I keep, I think is just continuing to feel it, you know? Yeah. So I don't know if that answers your question. Did you have an ally come? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I was like, when should I, how should I think about summoning the ally? How did, should they, I, did they tell you or when you asked them? Yeah, yeah. What would oh, they say? Uh, it said, it's kind of funny. Uh, yeah. Just call upon Joe, like call, call my name, Joe. Joe, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> call, call Joe, or or sit down and meditate for a little bit. Or you know, either, either or. Either or, yeah. Good, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, then there you go. So you call Joe. I mean, we say those words, but then even the more you practice with that, that memory, those words called Joe will elicit. The experience will remind you of the experience of being with Joe, I guess, yeah. in the process. Yeah. You know? And I don't know if it was a sweet experience or I don't know, fun or. Yeah, it was good. It was like, I guess it was Joe sort of like uh, became a mentor of sorts. I, I imagine him as a mentor yeah. of all the wisdom and things I've learned um, that I keep forgetting oh. to feed my demon. But yeah. Oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah. So you call on Joe. Yeah. So that's calling on that wisdom, that mentoring. Yeah. No, thank you. Anyone else want to share? So maybe it's because recently I've finally started doing this practice regularly. But yeah, I was first introduced to it at Tara Mandala exactly 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the need, the want, and the need. What does it mean when they're the same thing? Mm. Well, they, they, um, they shouldn't be. Okay. Yeah. Well, usually they're not, you know, I'm so, so you would probably want to, maybe you would just would want a little bit more time, you know, to really figure out what the need is underneath that want, you know, 
in that, it, it may be, I'm not sure your experience, but it may not have been clear this time, you know, but um, yeah. Are you asking what is the difference? Like the want would be like the more superficial, you know, like if, if you're, um, if it's like an impatient statement, I want everything just to get done quick, you know, but the need underneath that is like, uh, I think I use this example, wanting actually this feeling of having more time is actually what that fiery energy really wants underneath or, um, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes in my marriage, I'm just, I'll just reveal in my marriage, I get, um, you know, I get so angry, you know, sometimes. And I think what's in it for me underneath it is just this, like, almost like my early imprints of fear, like, um, and like, um, you know, not being held, not, you know, I don't know. It's just this complex, those early imprints. So like the want, the, what do you want? Well, just, you know, get out of my way or I, I don't want to deal with this. Like, it's like that first knee jerk reaction, but what do you need? What do you really need? I just need to be held, you know? So it's like, you're, you're just starting to part. There's so much in those, in that, so it, in that, um, in those two questions and it, and sometimes the answer comes, you know, and sometimes in the process, you, you may need a little bit more time, you know, so you try it again tomorrow or yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Well, I just wanted to add that I have done this practice extensively and this is the best practice I've ever had. You just blew my mind. Which one this? Oh, it, right here tonight. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. It was a really uh, solid group. And, um, you know, this takes a lot of stability in your own practice to be able to turn towards these things, you know, so... And it's really powerful to do it in a group like this. Really important. I mean, there's different, we could all eventually like feed one demon, you know, we could all work with like, and it gets, it's pretty cool. We could all do like fear together, you know, or the mother wound or, you know, you know, so many. Yeah, other, um, <clears throat> other questions or anything you wanna share? Yeah. Um, I guess my, my demon appeared right when I got here. Uh -huh. um, in your body? In my thoughts. Your thoughts, yeah. Yeah. And um, so it's interesting because I'm like, how do I succinctly say all this? I had been in a workshop and we did a chair thing. Yeah. And so it was coming from a chair thing. Uh -huh. um, and I have this one friend who's very critical lame things mm -hmm. and I had to have the chair of the friend and the inner critic and it's like but my friend that is the critic <laughs> that's not me that's my friend like they're supposed to be in that chair and so that was my demon and so I sent him back to my friend because I'm like those aren't mine yeah 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 that's so cute. but it felt very like whoa the thing that came up was the chair thing interesting yeah yeah so it felt Felt like, oh, what a coincidence. Yeah, that's really, that's amazing that Jung would call that synchronicity. <laughs> yeah. The way that the world can appear to us suddenly, you know, he says, the veil, um, the world behind the veil, you know, it's suddenly um, as if the world is appearing to help our awakening in some way. Yeah. Can I add just a little more? Please, so please. he once criticized me for making people wait while I parked in San Francisco. Uh -huh. um, so and I was like, how else are you going to park in San Francisco? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. People have to wait. Yeah. And so it was as I was parking, I was thinking of that. that oh, just now. Yeah. Oh, when I got here, yeah. that it's like that, like. How, what else can I do? You have to make people wait as yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I, this is very practical too. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. 
I just had a quick question. Yeah. Is it, would it be more powerful? Let's say your demon appears in certain physical places like your at your workplace or yeah. I don't know, somewhere that you live. Would it be good to do it there? Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what your work vibe is like, but um, so just to be the demon, I know we know this, but this is like now the teacher and me kind of get all the technical. The demon um, doesn't appear. We go into situations in our life that elicit the demon within us. Gotcha. Yeah, just I know you know this, but I want to just clarify that. So you know, we call it getting triggered or, you know, whatever. We have language for this. Um, so certain situations bring out the demon in us, yeah. inside of us. And, you know, so you got to just be skillful, like, oh, like, oh, God, there it is, you know? And then you see, like, I can't talk to I, I can't deal with you right now or whatever. You, you talk to that demon part, you know, we'll, we'll you know, um, we'll run the five steps later or, or call Joe. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, you might as well use them. Maybe just a few more, a one or two. Yeah. Someone else. Yeah. Okay. Here, honey, just yeah. Uh sure. Okay. So um yeah, that was my first time doing that. It was really cool. Thank you. Oh, nice. I well. found that like there were some similarities to like parts work and different yes. therapeutic yes. perspectives. Um, and one thing that was really useful was the actual like physical getting up and like standing up and creating that, uh, that like physical boundary between like the demon and your interpretation of the demon or whatnot. So, um, I don't really have a question, but anything else to add about like the usefulness of creating that healthy boundary in the process or other ways to think about yeah. how to do that more smoothly? <laughs> Well, I think you just did, or you just described it perfectly. That That is what the getting up and um, taking the place does. You're starting to uh, out picture or put out the thing that we usually carry in our body, out of our body, and now we're looking at it. I love the moment when I see myself. Did you notice that moment? That's always really profound for me. When I see myself from the ally's eyes, like... Yeah, I, I forget what it was today because I was doing it, but also guiding. Yeah, and also when you see yourself from the demon's eyes, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes I see myself, it's like, I'm like this, you know. You know that feeling sometimes? Yeah, I'm like, oh, honey, you know, I don't even know. You're like, but you see, and then you also simultaneously see that when the ally sees you like that, she or he or they or it, you know, may not see something else that it's it's a beautiful process i love that moment too yeah you remember that moment sometimes um it's kind of like a dream so you kind of forget little pieces but those are one pieces of it that i like yeah anything else did you want to say yeah um, I've done this off and on for years and years. And the one thing that I notice is that <clears throat> uh, not when I'm doing the process, but more like in this, in moments when it's elicited and I want to like, I'll bring the ally forward. But what I have noticed, I bring the ally forward with this suffocating energy. Um, so the beauty of the process is there's like this sort of transformation of the demon and then it gets fed. Yeah. But in the moment, if it's like, so I've been working with a lot of like fear about the world. Yeah. Right. So if I bring the alley up, like the idea in the moment, if I'm reading the news or whatever, is to like stop the fear and that suffocating energy in us. That's the opposite yeah. of what the practice calls for. And so I just sort of like really noticed that tonight that the practice is calling for like a really deep compassionate yeah. energy around like really giving the demon what it needs. Yeah. But when I'm doing it like on the spot and I'm feeling fear, all I want is for that fear to go away. And that's exactly what that demon experiences from me on a regular basis is like this desperate attempt to banish it. Yeah. And that isn't what the ally is for, or that isn't what the ally does right. in the real practice. So I just sort of, that's a beautiful be, insight. And, yeah. Yeah. It is at its root. This is at its root, a compassion practice. You know, that's just, that. that's how it is. We don't usually, maybe it's someone else's demons, we tend to more easily, like I know I certainly tend to my children's um, pain 
in a different way that I tend to my own, you know? So I'm sure you have people in your life, whether you have children or not, your friends, you know, your lovers. Um, yeah. But, you know, um, as we know, the want, um, you know, these demons, they're, they're kind of like armor, you know, uh, protecting the much softer wounded part that's underneath all of that. So when we turn towards it with compassion, then we really are beginning to meet that part of ourselves with a real kind of sweetness and tenderness, you know. And that's that gesture, I think, that's um, not only liberating and transformative for this practice, but we can also imagine what would happen if we all did that, you know, in the world. Yeah. Well, we should maybe consider kind of closing for now, dedicating the merit and uh, and then I think the, the the crew here has a few um, <clears throat> announcements to make. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe look around the room, make eye contact with each other. We all did it together. Hello, online people. Thank you for being here with us. Yeah. Yeah, just seeing how you feel to yourself now. Like we've we've done the process, you know, and we can do it again and again, but um, I'm just noticing we bring our eyes closed again and just noticing how you feel to yourself. And again, recalling the ally, uh, the energy there, that wisdom that is inherent in us. And we can either bring our hands to our hearts or in prayer, whatever feels good. We dedicate the merit as we do in the tradition, which is gathering up all the blessings, all the, the sweetness, the wisdom of the allies, the courage and strength it takes to meet our demons, to meet the parts in us that are not yet integrated or that need more tending that this collective strength, this collective wisdom, and the deep compassion, that it also continue to touch our lives and fill our bodies, our hearts, but that it also may radiate out beyond us into the lives of others. As it said, those near and far, known and unknown, without one exception, and as, as we are a collective and we are more powerful in this way, taking a moment to really visualize this, these prayers like light or energy moving out around the world into the places, especially where there is unimaginable suffering. And holding a picture for a moment of this uh, awakened world, this bodhicitta everywhere. Thank you so much. Thank you for your practice tonight. It's beautiful to be together. <laughs>